Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's Skincare Sunday video, I'm gonna be talking about my full Tretinoin experience from start to finish. I asked you guys what you wanted to see and this was the most highly voted video, so that's what you're getting today. Obviously, this video is gonna be quite long, I feel like, so I'm gonna put timestamps throughout and also down below if you just wanna to skip to a bit that you wanna hear about or know about in terms of my experience with Tretinoin. But of course, I'm gonna start from the very beginning and just get straight into it. I have had acne for many, many years and I've tried a lot of different um, prescription medication. So to name a few, I've tried alizaic acid, I've tried epiduo, I'm not sure if I've tried epiduo or duac, but either way, one of those. And um, I also did a round of chemical peels with the Skin Clinic, which is a really well established skin clinic or clinic in general that does um, skin peels, skin lasers, skin microdermabrasion, all sorts of things. I did that last year. The reason I did that was because I was kind of at my wits end with the aftermath of my latest acne breakout at that time. I had a lot of darker purple and quite almost indented scarring, but not um, ice picks. I spent a lot of money on it. It worked really well. I had three rounds of a mandelic peel at 30% and that really took my skin from this to this. I will insert some pictures to show you guys that it did work. It was effective. However, my acne obviously came back. I didn't really have an acne management system in place. I wasn't using any additional uh, medication and my acne came back and of course it scarred again. So I wanted to mention that because obviously I've had acne for a long time and I've tried many things and leading up to tretinoin was one of the latest things I tried. It was something that I tried last year as well. So I had my chemical peels at the beginning of the year. So I did them February, March and April. I had one each month basically and they went up in strength. If you hear that, that's my little tortoise. So anyway, later on in the year, I went to Portugal, which is where I actually got my acne medication, the tretinoin at 0.05%. Now I had no intention of actually getting that. I just went there on holiday. You know, I didn't, I wasn't even aware of this tretinoin bubble. So after my chemical peels, I felt that a retinol would be a good help at managing my acne. Um, it didn't do a whole lot, I'm not gonna lie. I used La Roche-Posay, um, I think it's like a concentrate, maybe 0.03%. Don't think that that's similar to Tretinoin. If you know, you know, they're not on the same level. That's, they're different, they're different league. A, a retinol and a retinoid, like a, a Tretinoin versus a Paula's Choice retinol, they're on different levels, which is also one of the other ones I use. 1% Paula's Choice Retinol is not the same as a 1% Tretinoin. It's just not, okay? It's not gonna have nearly the same results. So anyway, I usually get my acne medication online because it's a lot easier rather than booking a doctor's appointment, going there, speaking about my acne and getting prescribed something. You can do it here like for a pharmacy called Boots and you just go online, fill out all your details and they will prescribe something to you and then you can just go pick it up at the pharmacy. So that's where I got all my previous acne medication. However, when I was in Portugal, I didn't have any and I was kind of freaking out like I need whatever it was, benzoyl peroxide or whatever I was using at the time and the system was down, I couldn't get it. When I get back, I need to look for my acne treatment. Blah, 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 blah. And um, while I was online, I just I just came across like tretinoin. Like honestly, like what could I get while I'm here? Tretinoin. And then people were saying that, you know, it's a, it's a really strong retinoid, has great results and it's available here in Portugal. I say there actually, cause I'm not here in Portugal. There in Portugal at such a cheap price. So I went into the pharmacy with a picture, Keterel. And I asked for it at 0.05 and also 0.1, but they were sold out of the 0.1 where it wasn't available. So I just got the 0.05 and um, I then started it later on my holiday, like when I was about to leave. At the time I was dealing with acne, of course, and also the post-inflammatory marks left behind by my previous acne and this constant cycle that I was just, I'm always in, I'm still in technically. I'm not like fully, fully clear of my acne and my scarring and all that kind of stuff, but, Tretinoin has been a big help, which I will get to. So getting it from the pharmacy, I did not need a prescription and it was available to me at like 350, 350, I should say on here, yeah. 3 euro 50, super, super cheap. So I never claim to be an expert or like a specialist that knows about skincare. Like I know things through research and having suffered with acne for years, you learn a thing or two. 
And a lot of that is also learned through mistakes, which I made some mistakes, definitely when, when I started trusting Owen, I did not realize how harsh it was. And I know that seems so hard to comprehend if you know about trusting Owen, because even now it's like, really? You didn't know that that is so, so powerful? But I genuinely didn't. I had had chemical peels, my skin has, I literally saw my skin peeling off my face and I thought, my skin is tough, my skin can take whatever, look at it, it did that, it did this, and I'm still surviving. Tretinoin is the strongest stuff I've ever put on my face. Obviously Mandelic Pill is super, super strong, really, really effective, but Tretinoin is this way that you have to change your skincare lifestyle, I'm gonna call it that, for a long period of time. Whereas a chemical peel, you change your skincare lifestyle for a little while, you know, you deal with how you might apply your makeup, you obviously don't exfoliate, you have to be extra protective with your sunscreen and apply it really, really regularly. Tretinoin is, is a different story because I started way too fast. I started using it every day, like within two weeks, I was using it every night. Anyway, I used it so fast and I made a video about that. I mean, it's quite old now and my YouTube presence and talking to the camera is a bit better but in that video I really just kind of said look this is what I did wrong I used my spin brush way too harshly <laughs> um because I didn't want that dry skin on my face I felt like it shouldn't be there when actually it should that's part of the process and um I also waxed I still not gonna lie I still kind of cheekily try and wax most of the time when I did that on Tresno and I completely and utterly forgot about Retinols, waxing, do not do. Tretinoin and retinols, retinoids, whatever you want to call them, they thin your skin. Like that's what they do. They thin the skin, the top layer, let's say. And um, when you're waxing, you're really just pulling off whatever skin is there. And when I was using tretinoin, there was barely anything there. So yeah, I really, really did that and messed up my upper lip. But it's fine. Your skin will heal if you have done that. From so in summary, from that video, I did some stuff that was just a bit stupid, and I wasn't properly educated about it because I thought it'd be okay. By any means, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I used it perfectly, I knew what I was doing, because no, I didn't fully know what I was doing. Even though I was watching dermatology videos, even though I was watching other YouTubers using it, all in all, I felt like it wasn't going to be that problematic for me because my skin has been through a lot worse. Like, So I had a lot of dry skin, and to be fair, that's not uncommon. That can be very, very common. You can, Everybody flakes and peels differently, but I feel like my overuse really made that stuff happen so quickly, like super, super quickly and um, unnecessarily, you know, I didn't, I really didn't need to do that, particularly because after September is October, in case you didn't know, and um, October is cold, it's cold and um, throughout, from, from when I started using tretinoin, it was obviously winter, autumn and winter which in my opinion was like the worst time to start it, but I had no clue. I, had, I hadn't even considered that. So uh, my skin was already drying out from winter and autumn and you know, you put your radiators on, you blast the hot air conditioning in your car, you go outside and you get that cold wind. Yeah, it's all just detrimental to your skin, like so bad. And on top of that, I was using my spin brush and I was using tretinoin like every night. And you can imagine, if you know, you know, you you know, you know that that is the, like, the worst thing you could do. I mean, the only worst thing I could do on top of that was to neglect sunscreen. I don't even know what would happen if I did that. So thank God I did that one thing. There came a point where I did use my common sense and was like, uh, yeah, my skin's really drying out. Let me back off from this a bit. Let me just, you know, three nights a week, let's try now. So that leads me on to the area that is makeup. Makeup and tretinoin is a really, for me, in my opinion, a difficult thing to mix because technically, usually, you want your foundation to sit nicely. You know, if you don't have textured skin, then that would be perfect, but everybody has textured skin, especially if you're dealing with acne and scarring. It's, it's kind of, you know. And then on top of that, to have these dry, clingy bits and bulbs on your face, it's, it's hard. It's hard to navigate and I found it quite hard to actually wear foundation confidently because A, my skin was still in a oily yet dry state. Dry because I have been using the tretinoin and winter and just a lot. And then still oily because that's, it hadn't, you know, controlled my oil production yet. My sebum was still churning. And um, the skin was just when I put makeup on, it just didn't sit right. When you put makeup on generally with tretinoin, dry skin, 
it doesn't look the best. I've got it on now with my Adapalene dry skin. And when you wear makeup is when you actually, in terms of foundation and face makeup, that's when you will actually see the dry skin a lot more versus without it. It's kind of weird because you see the dry skin when it clings to something on the surface, you can really, really see it. And a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you wear tretinoin? How do you use tretinoin and still wear makeup and make it look um, flatter and da 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 da? And I guess there are like methods that you can use, but generally it's never going to look perfect. Like wearing makeup with tretinoin is not easy, and I still don't have a formula that is like, yeah, your skin will look great. It it just depends. My tortoise is now there. Hello. Do you want to say hello? Say hello. Hello. I don't really have much to give about makeup and tretinoin just know that it's a bit of a struggle to deal with um dry skin if you're not used to that level of dry skin dry skin and flakiness and then trying to mix like foundations and just try to make it sit right and you you know you buff your your foundation and then you find that all your dry skin just kind of yeah it, it's it's messy and it's not easy so um prepare yourself for that if you're starting tretinoin and i don't really have answers on that because to be honest what I ended up just doing was wearing less and less makeup. It just helped the appearance and it also helped with my confidence. So that leads me to the purge. Now, purging was, is something I'm aware of, but I've always known it in this way, this kind of mystical way that people would say in videos that it almost didn't sound real. It would sort of be, your skin will get worse before it gets better. Your skin will get worse before it gets better. And I just always thought like, yeah, okay, your skin will get worse, but it never really actually got ingrained into my head. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, I'd heard it and I'd known it, but I never knew it until I knew it, until I experienced it, until I went through it and realized that your skin will get worse before it gets better. And the thing is, I try to, from that, I try to warn people that are starting retinoids, like just know that you're gonna purge and it's gonna be the worst experience of your life and you're gonna hate yourself. Uh, that's all you can do. You can only warn people because it is horrific in some cases. That's the, that's the thing. It's not the same for everybody. We can't generalize everyone. Now, I like to play devil's advocate because we could also argue that maybe the rate that I was using the tretinoin really impacted the purge, my personal purge, possibly. Either way, it's done with now. And I made a whole video on it again when I was actually going through it. So whatever I said in that video was based on me at the time. I don't know what I've said in most videos, but um, you know, if I say something wrong, I'm not an expert feel free to correct me down below. It's my experience that I'm sharing, not necessarily my abundance of knowledge. Although I have learned a lot. So obviously from that, I went to look into purging. Okay, so it's this thing where everything from the bottom of the surface, your skin is coming up to the top and it comes up at a rapid rate and you just have to deal with it. You just have to deal with it. And from even from dermatologists that I've seen online and re reading and writing and whatever, they're saying that, look, you can slow down the process of using your knowing or you can kind of just use it, purge, and get on with it. Like, that, that seems like the only two options. Or you could quit. You could quit there. The questions below sometimes are like, how do I know if I'm purging or if I'm just having a reaction? I am not qualified to tell you if you'll have any reaction. If you are itching, like, and it's consistent, that's not a good sign. It's, it's not. You can be a bit itchy to start with, a bit of discomfort, a bit of, you know, your skin is a bit, your skin is irritated. Tretinoin irritates your skin. Like, like nothing else. And um, there may be a little bit of itchiness that comes with that, but it should not be severe, it should not be consistent and continuous and whatever. So if that's the case, then definitely just seek help because trust me, it should not it should not itch and it should not be unbearable, burning, stinging. There are different ways to deal with the skin irritation as a whole, by the way. Like you can use your tretinoin over moisturizer, which will help. You can use your tretinoin and then leave it on for a period of time and then wash it off. Yes, that is still effective. You can obviously alternate night by night. You can back off completely. You can really back down. So purging happened for me at about the two month mark. So what would that have been? About November. Yes, November, December. November, December were the, the two months where I was purging a lot and I was getting a lot of active breakouts, red, sore. I don't really remember picking at many of those spots because they were, they didn't have a white head. 
and they were very sore, so I didn't really want to be picking at them anyway. Then by January, I was left with these kind of marks. So again, more more post-inflammatory acne marks. That's how I knew that the purge had kind of ended because by that point there was no more, well, much less, I should say, active acne coming to the surface, especially at a rapid rate. Now, the reason I knew I was purging personally was because I was just getting a lot of sudden breakouts. I dealt with breakouts, like I said, throughout a long period of time. However, I'd never seen it just honestly erupt. If that did usually happen, it would it was nowhere near the amount that I was experiencing. Like I said, by January, my skin had really calmed down. I think I was still getting probably a few, but the, the whole explosion of acne had definitely stopped and I was left with a lot more marks. Yay! I'd say from there, in my updates, for example, my three month update and my six month update, as much as I would have loved to have said, yeah, this is working, I'm not getting any breakouts. Uh, yeah, my skin is really looking great. My acne scars are fading. Like, I couldn't really say any of that. I remember saying like, look, I was expecting more results. I'm still waiting. Um, I've been through this purge, which was hell. My skin's kind of calmed down and it's really dry. Yeah, they were pretty much my updates in summary. So let's go with month three, which would have been January. My skin had been through the purge. It had been very dry and I started to back off, I believe. I think I must have. My skin kind of just stayed in that state. Dry skin, still quite dark pigmentation. Yeah it felt the same. February, March. Now, February and March for me was the period where I decided I'm really just gonna cut it, cut it back with the makeup. It's not doing anything for me. I, I just found myself getting home from work and my makeup was practically gone. And I was sometimes having new little eruptions on my chin, which were of course these little whiteheads that just love to come. For me, those chin breakouts are really, really correlated with whenever I use things that are clogging my skin. I know that sounds like really simple, but it's hard to really determine these things because I was thinking, what sunscreen am I using? Is it my foundation? What, you know, trying to pinpoint can be really difficult, but I just wanted to rule out foundation. I just wanted to rule it out because if that's one of the things, I'm happily gonna give that up to just have my chin act normal. And they would come over the course of a day. Obviously they've been sitting in the skin ready to come, but what I'm saying is I'll be at work doing my thing. And then by the end of it, end of the day, they're there and I feel very self-conscious. I feel like I should pop them and just get rid of them because people are gonna see it and yeah, it's hard to deal with that. March, March, we did not know was gonna be locked down due to everything that's happening. And March again was a period where I was really just backing off of my foundation, was kind of just over with it. Um, really just trying to up my moisturization game, had really learned to not use as much retinoin, not use it as regularly, stop using spin brushes, stop exfoliating, and deal with it that way, simplifying things. So from there, it definitely got better. I would say my dryness, to be, to be completely honest with you, I would say that my dryness was consistent. It was consistent. It didn't get less like, oh, my skin feels less dry now. Like, no, obviously at the beginning when I had that whole beard full of flaky, that was like a one-off. I never had that again. I had that in the beginning stage. And then from there, it was just consistent, dry, 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 dry skin. It didn't get worse. It didn't get better. It just kind of was consistent at this. I have dry skin now. <laughs> dry and oily skin. What a mess. So March would have been, let me do some maths, October, November, December, January, February, March. Six months March would have been. And in my six month update, I was definitely beginning to experience some acne control. From my purge to now, six month mark, now being then, I was experiencing much less acne, like in general. So I could finally kind of feel like, okay, this tretinoin is kind of managing my actual acne now. Then I knew that my acne was under a bit more control and I felt I had a bit more confidence in tretinoin and I, I was a lot more optimistic. Again, in my six month update, I stated that my chin was still just doing its thing. It wasn't cooperating with the tretinoin. I just kind of brushed it off as the purge again. I knew that my chin was a very congested area and I felt like 
the tretinoin was of course doing what it did to the rest of my skin and getting everything to the surface and I thought that these whiteheads will keep coming and keep coming but it'll be part of the purge and I'm just going to have to accept that. Let's go into April and May because April again I consider, April I consider a really good month actually with my skin. It really started to clear. My pigmentation faded a lot over that period, that was when I really noticed it at least. And also the dryness, like I said, was pretty much the same, but it just felt a lot easier to deal with. I feel like by that point I'd already dealt with it and I'd learned ways to deal with my dryness. What cream I'm using, what moisturiser, what sheet mask, what I want to, you know, obviously I think the biggest thing for me was getting rid of the spin brush, getting rid of the flannels, getting rid of all this exfoliation that was drying out my skin and compromising it so much more than it needed to be. Why can't you just sit still like other animals? <sighs> so by that period, my skin was honestly like, had that tretinoin glow, the marks were fading, the skin wasn't as dry, but also coming out of, you know, winter and autumn, we're going into spring and my skin was doing well. He is stuck. Back it up. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get you out. Go play over there. As I was saying, April was looking good and I thought it was gonna get better and better and better and I was really excited and optimistic again. And then May came. So by May, my skin was doing okay and then it kind of dipped again. We all know it fluctuates. And by no means am I using Tretinone to get like the perfect skin where I never break out and, you know, have the most flawless airbrush skin. Like, no, I'm, I'm a realist at heart. Like, I know that I break out. We're having a bit of a lighting change because the sun is blinding me. Okay, so then my skin kind of went a bit backwards. And May came, and we had, here in the UK, a lot of hot weeks. By hot, I'm talking like 28 degrees. So my chin, when it, when it has anything on it, any oils, any lotions and potions, foundations, liquid, it breaks out. So by this point, my skin really, my chin, I should say, really just started erupting again, so suddenly. I was using Tretinoin at this point three times a week to alternate nights. This was erupting again, and I, I had experienced it throughout. And like I said in my six month update, I was like, this is just purging. It will continue and it will continue and I will get through it and I will deal with it. But dealing with those are so hard because they are there and they're white and they just, I didn't want to pop it because I didn't want to, you know, inflict more bacteria. I didn't want to, I just didn't want a whole mess. Can you imagine if I popped every single one of those spots? It would just be a pool of pus and yeah. So to be honest, I just had enough. That was when I decided that I was gonna quit my tretinoin because it was like, you know what? This tretinoin cream is not the one. It's doing good for my like scarring and stuff, but my chin is not. It's not helping. It's too pore clogging. I know that sounds crazy because this should be unclogging your pores. So my initial thought was, yes, this is part of the purge. But at the same time, if I had a gel, I think I would have a different story. The cream might just be too thick, too creamy, too emollient, too whatever for my skin in that area, which I've mentioned. This area responds differently. I can put oil literally all over my forehead. It will survive, it will. If I did the same to my chin, no, 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 I know that I'm waking up tomorrow with whiteheads. I know it. I can bet you a hundred pounds. That's when I decided to quit the Tretinoin and literally that morning I went on to Dermatica. I was like, I need something else. I can't use this. I didn't want to, to be honest, I didn't want to not use an acne medication because I've tried that route so many times. You know, I've tried to just be, you know, to just wash my face and use a toner and a moisturizer and everything will be okay. No realistically it is a skin disease and it needs to be treated and I spent so many years using Clearasil and salicylic acid and thinking that I'm treating my acne when really I wasn't <laughs> I, I really wasn't to the extent that it needed to actually be treated so by this point at age 25 I know that my acne needs to be medically treated and my suffering of like you know 10 years I want 
proper treatment. So I woke up that morning and I literally just did it, got a Depoline. So that kind of leads me to where I quit. And even though I quit my Tresanoin, it does not mean that I don't think it's really effective. I saw results and I do feel if I'd carried on, I would have had, you know, continued to see results. However, my chin was just too much to bear. It had, you know, this has been happening for years. When you've been dealing with something for years and it just explodes on your face again, I really knew that something wasn't right. And I really thought maybe it's fungal acne, maybe it's this, sometimes it itches. And I don't know. So I just had to go to a dermatologist and let them decide, let them be the dermatology team that they are, let them evaluate my skin and let them give me prescription strength ingredients that can help my skin. I have learned so much from my tretinoin experience in terms of what I should and should not be doing with the retinoid. And this time round has been so different. To be honest, making that decision to quit tretinoin was not hard because those whitehead chin experiences just were too much. Like it was just too much, especially when I told you how well my skin was doing in April. So then have that, it was like, I've had enough of this because it is a constant, constant, constant cycle. And my way of dealing with it was to get a different treatment. I have been talking for so long. I really hope this video was helpful in sharing my actual experience with, with a bit more of a timeline so you guys can see how it has been. Tretinoin is a journey and uh, yeah, I know a lot of you guys follow me for, for Tretinoin, but don't worry, Adapalene is also a retinoid and that is also a journey. So hey, we're here again. Don't forget to subscribe if you love skincare videos because I have a new one every Sunday. Torture! <laughs>